Colorado State University released its hurricane season forecast, and yeah, it's a little active. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're first going to break down their outlook, talk about the numbers that they are forecasting for the upcoming hurricane season. Then we're going to break down the science and meteorology of the driving forces of the season and why they are expecting so many storms. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some of the forecast models. It's partially the reason why the forecast is so high, but I want to show you the, some of the raw data coming Coming in so you can see for yourself and you'll know that by the end of this video so you can make your own interpretation as well before we get into this video if you do want to stay updated on what could be a really active hurricane season hit that subscribe button post in the comments where you're tuning in from and if you happen to find this content helpful give it a thumbs up really do appreciate that really does help us out a lot and again as i always say we go through this without fear without hype this is literally the forecast that they gave and this is going to be broken down with science and meteorology so that you know exactly what to expect this year there's gonna be a lot of changes going forward all right their forecast 23 named storms that's pretty active 11 of those becoming hurricanes five of those becoming major hurricanes you see that is way above the average first things first a couple of caveats here a couple of things i want to point out I know what you're thinking. They say it's going to be active every year. First and foremost, since 2013, we have had way above average hurricane seasons. Secondly, Colorado State actually predicted a slightly below normal season last year because El Nino was in play. That ended up being way above normal as well. So I know what you think, but that's not entirely the case, and it's actually been way above normal as well. The other thing, too, is, well, they name everything these days. Well, yeah, we have better satellite technology to do that, of course, but when I say we, the National Weather Service is the entity responsible for naming hurricanes and naming systems. Nonetheless, focus on the intense stuff. Hurricanes, of course, those are are never the garbage short-lived tropical systems and again they are predicting 11 of those now something that colorado state also does they have probabilities of where these storms get close to so they highlight every single state that has coastline with it we're going to start with florida here and again this is not probability of landfall this is probability with a storm tracking 50 miles within a coastline there's a lot of coastline in florida but they are giving it a 96 percent shot that a storm gets within 50 miles of the florida coastline today in parentheses is the average number okay that so that's 10 percent above what you would typically see in a, in a quote unquote average year in terms of a hurricane they are giving it a 75 percent chance of a hurricane coming within 50 miles of the florida coastline average is 56 so that that is significantly higher than average and then for a major hurricane they're giving it a 44 percent shot 29 percent is climatology now here's a few other select states here alabama is also high and you see the percentage is broken down i have the name storm hurricane major in that order and then i have the average for name storm hurricane in major there so alabama also expecting a much higher than normal probability of being in impacted by a name storm this year same for us in texas look at that an 80 percent shot for a name storm that's nearly 20 percent above the average north carolina as well i'm going to show you some analogs coming up and you will see why that we have an 85 percent shot of a name storm in North Carolina, average is 68%. And then even the Northeast getting involved in this, 41% shot in New York, 26 is average. And then again, that is for a name storm. It's a 16% chance for a hurricane. And then for Maine, we have a 34% shot for a name storm where we would typically have a 21% chance. Again, that is by average. Now, the main reason here is we get into the why are they expecting such an active season in april and again it is april they're going to have more forecasts coming out as we move forward again not 100 percent reliable but you can catch on to some trends and what the atmosphere is doing el nino is still there but it is expected to fade extremely quickly we're looking in the equatorial pacific and we still see out in the nino 3.4 region that's the scientific area that we look it's still red the anomalies are warmer than normal but just beneath the ocean surface, there's a lot of colder water ready to be upwelled, so to speak, as the trade winds continue to strengthen, push all that warmth back to Australia. And then that's going to allow the cooler air there. That matters a ton for the Atlantic hurricane season because when you have the cooler water there, it changes where thunderstorms develop. 
And unfortunately for the Atlantic Basin anyway, that promotes more thunderstorm development in the Atlantic in addition to reducing wind shear, which hurricanes do not like. That tends to suppress development. The other thing here too, this is from March. We talked about this in a former video, but I just wanted to show you that again, that the probabilities from the Climate Prediction Center in NOAA show again that by hurricane season, here we go, June, July, August, that the probabilities go up for La Nina. That's the blue bar here. And then really by the peak of hurricane season, we're talking greater than an 80% chance that La Nina is in play. And they issued a La Nina watch for that back in February. Another thing I want to show you are some of the models here. Um, we're going to get into that in just one second. But I want to show you before we get into that, the sea surface temperature anomaly for the Atlantic. Now, this could do one of two things. Even what I like to call a slam dunk forecast. If everything looks like it's coming into fruition, sometimes it still doesn't work out. You always have to look for some limiting factors, and there certainly are going to be limiting factors present even when this is sticking out like a sore thumb that this is going to be a super active season. One of those is the warm water temperature. Now it's a catch-22. Look at the anomalies here in the red and the purple. This is 3 to 4 degrees Celsius above normal in the main development region. It's really warm in the Caribbean and Gulf as well. One of the things that tropical systems tend to do, though, if they get real big and strong out here, more often than not, Hurricane Irma, for instance, is a exception to that rule. It just kept on making a beeline west. But a lot of times when they get strong out here, if they come off towards the Cabo Verde Islands, they have a tendency to fling out before they get to land. It's super warm out there, so that's one of the things that we are going to be watching. That's a ton of fuel. They're likely going to get big and strong. But if they do that, more often than not anyway, they tend to fly on out of here. Look at some of the analogs here. There's a lot of lines on this on this map that you're looking at here. These are five hurricane seasons based on the NMME model with sea surface temperature anomaly forecast for the upcoming hurricane season. Now, there's a lot of lines on here, so I'm going to mark out in red where the hot spots are or where there's a kind of a more consensus. And the years, if you are wondering, are 1999. 1975, 2011, 1970, and then 2010. You clearly see we have some hot, hot spots. And we talked about also in another video that it, we also tend to see a more active Caribbean year when we're in an El Nino, or in a La Nina year, when especially transitioning out of a strong El Nino to La Nina, we are going to see a likely active Caribbean season. So for my friends in Central America, we're going to be watching you closely. Also in the Northeast Caribbean and around Puerto Rico, also on the western side of the Bay of Campeche, and then close to Florida. You see that red? I mentioned about North Carolina before. There's a lot of storms that try to track on through the Bahamas and then want to curve up towards the Carolinas and then very, very close to the Florida coastline. There are a few that try to come through the Gulf as well up toward Florida in the Eastern Gulf. Now, again, these are just analogs. It's using the past to kind of look at the future. Not one analog is, is a slam dunk either. We just try to catch on some trends, but that's something that the folks at Colorado State used to make this forecast. And as I say, there's some limiting factors here. I want to get into some of the modeling because I think this will also kind of I guess just show you some of the raw data coming in. And I think that's important for you guys to see. This is the European forecast, and there's some colors and bars on here. But I want to direct your attention to the right side of this screen. That peach color means that we have a significant anomaly, by the way. Uh, I'll scroll down and show you. That's significant at 5%. 5 this is the European forecast, and what we're looking at is the Atlantic Basin, and you see that green color here. This is the forecast. So the European model is forecasting 17 storms. Climatology is about 12 storms, okay? There's the ensembles, and that's why it comes out to a... Uh, not an even number, not just a straight number. There's a dot whatever because that's what the math shows you. I want to point something out here, though. Look at the months that are forecast. April, May, April, May June, July, August, and September. October and November aren't even included in that number there. So on average, you see about two more storms form in October. So you would, again, be forecasting in terms of the number of the frequency there maybe close to 19 or 20 storms, and you see their forecast is even higher than that because typically in an active Caribbean year, 
that season rages well on into October and then even November. Think a couple years ago where we had the Adas and Iotas and got into the Greek alphabet. We had those big storms impacting Central America, Honduras, Nicaragua. So that's something that we're going to have to watch for late into the season. I want to show you on tropicaltidbits.com as well the anomalies. One of the things that we look at too are the precipitation anomalies here. Um, way out into September, and again, it's April. Things are likely going to change, but these have kind of been showing the same kind of story, and this is very typical for a La Nina year to have the darker greens and even blues up here representing the strong precipitation anomalies, and that would be the kind of the track, so to speak, these storms that roll off of Africa and then go over, and you see where all the green is, into the Gulf of Mexico, into Central America, into the Caribbean, toward the Bahamas and Florida. That is the CANSIPS, that's the Canadian climate model. The NMME model, which is what those analogs are based off of, show again a similar thing. Storms getting out here. Now, we would like this, if they can go here and then kind of curve out, but also notice the green through Central America, through the Caribbean, back to the Gulf, and then we do have the greens kind of showing up and riding out. That would be a hurricane track also or a tropical storm track synonymous with some what some of the analogs are also saying so there are several things um that we are going to be watching there as we go forward so again just a few things but that some of the things that the folks at colorado state did to make their forecast and of course we've been showing you that for the last couple of months it's the season now we're going to start to be inundated with some tropical forecasts so i hope that you found this informative and again not trying to scare anybody not trying to hype anybody hype anything up here the deal with this is we always say it it only takes one i always go back to 1992 that was a very low active season not a lot of activity in 1992 but we all remember the one storm that is remembered that is known for the hurricane season in 92 that was andrew so it's the opposite there of what i'm talking about is that it only takes one even in a year where you're expecting one storm if that one is a major hurricane and impacts you it's a bad season if here we get 100 storms and none of them hit land it's not a bad season but it is an active season so it's one of the things we're going to be watching for the limiting factor in my hope anyway and again that could be wish casting a little bit but again those major hurricanes do tend to get strong or when they get strong out there they tend to miss the islands and go out into no man's land in the middle of atlantic that's what I'm going to be rooting for, but again, we're going to be with you guys every step of the way watching this as we get into the 2024 hurricane season. And if you want to stay updated on all that without the fear tactics, without all the hype, with sound science and meteorology, you've come to the right place. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd love to know where you're tuning in from as well, whether it's Central America, the Caribbean, the state of Florida, across the United States, Canada. We got you guys covered. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll keep you posted. We'll catch you soon.